I'm over here checking on my resident beaver. I haven't given you guys an update in quite a while. He's got uh, quite the thing going on here. And I know there's more than one beaver in here now, which is nice. Seeing all of this, though, makes me not want to sell the homestead. <laughs> I got to tell you, it's uh, quite the decision I have to make now. But I want to show you some of this. He's been busy little beaver. You see all the work he's doing? Some folks that are following my channel don't get to see stuff like this firsthand. So I'll show you uh, the impressive work that the beaver's got going on. Here is his dam. This is one of his little crossovers. He's got a secondary dam down there and then another dam further down and then it looks like a little bit of a dam below that. I mean, look at the water. He's got a nice lake going. My homestead is right there. Yeah, pretty cool. See, when you have those little spots with the mud right there, right there, right there, what he's doing is he dives down deep and then he pushes like a bulldozer on the bottom of the pond and he pushes it all up and then he uses his little paws and he puts it in place. I've witnessed them doing that on many, many occasions. They're really interesting animals. I will try and take some time and set up out here in the evening and get some footage of the beaver at work. And I will go out and harvest some popple, which he doesn't have here, and that's his favorite food. And I'll put it on the bank here and see if I can get some footage of them. They are really, really interesting animals. I love what he's doing out here. So many people, as soon as they see a peel stick on their property or a little bit of water backed up, man, they freak right out and they want them gone, but they just don't see the big picture. Yeah, you know, this was nothing but ugly brush. And now it's a beautiful pond, and I've really been enjoying it. And it's interesting having the beaver here. I learn a lot about them by watching them. Take a look over here. A yeah, peel stick there. He's working on his lodge over here. See where he's been putting fresh mud up. Remnants from supper time. Yep. He gets in there, he eats all the bark. <laughs> really interesting. He's been fixing his lodge up. I really love seeing this. I really do. It's very pleasurable to have all this water in here and all the waterfowl and everything that's coming and going. It's really nice. So much better than just looking at brush. Uh, I think when I offer the homestead, I'm going to offer it with about 15 to 20 acres and keep the marsh with the rest of the property and I might hold on to it for a while. Unless someone wants to buy it all and throw a nice fat check at me, then I might let it go. But I like seeing all the wildlife in here and I like the ecosystem that the beaver is building here. Got a good thing going. Look at the lake he made me. <laughs> it's wonderful. Wonderful. This was nothing but brush before. Look at the lake. Beautiful. Well, in my last video, I said I'm going to take some time and go hunting. As soon as I say that, we get a blast of warm weather. It's like summer out. Even the bugs are coming out again. Now, I'm not a big fan of letting my deer hang for weeks on end, but I like to hang it at least 24 hours when, when I can. Uh, we got warm weather right now. I'm not going to hang the deer, so I'm taking some time to do some scouting on my property. Normally, I hunt the same spots that produce real well. But well, we've had some new people move in on the road this year. Uh, new places went up. We've got generators running, dogs barking, things like that. So the deer movement has changed. They're not funneling through like they normally do. It's time for me to adapt, find their travel routes, and set up in new locations. So that's what I'm doing this morning. I've had a lot of folks over the last year asking me to do a video on bow hunting 
talk about equipment because they know I still use the old stuff, aluminum shafts, my old bow that I bought in 98, stuff like that. Uh, people ask me to talk about technique, stand placement. So I'm going to try and kill two birds with one stone this morning as I find some new spots, get set up. Hopefully I can throw some footage together for you all. So I'm going to get rolling on that. We'll see how the day pans out. I never cared much for setting up in open hardwoods where I could see for a country mile. I ain't sightseeing. The beaver activity has been funneling down the deer movement, so I'll set my stand accordingly, right here in the swamp. Walked right through here the other day, and I didn't see that. I might have missed it, but I don't think so. Oh, there's some more rubs there. That looks awesome. <laughs> yeah, there's another rub there there this is what I'm talking about see I've got a swamp right there that's a wet swamp and then just right there is kind of like a dry swamp it's all muddy and brushy and on the other side of that there's a lot of cedars and thick stuff like I'm in here over there we have a change all of a sudden see it turns to hardwoods and it's open and over there, you can't find any rubs at all. None. None. And this thick stuff skirting the edge of the swamp is where the deer are staying. They're staying out of that open area. So if you have a stand over there, chances are you're going to miss all of the deer that are in here. Because look, I just showed you that rub over there. A nice rub right there. Hey, I'm in the swamp. Deer tracks. I prefer to set my stands right in the thick stuff. The more concealed I am, the more confidence I have in my stand, and confidence will keep me from getting anxious and rushing the shot. I'll clip out a few windows to shoot through, and that'll do. Now, quite often, folks have asked if I would make an archery video and give recommendations on equipment and clothing. Well, I'm certainly no newcomer to the sport, but I'm not by any means an authority on the subject. I have no idea what's on the market these days, and quite frankly, I'm kind of disgusted with how commercial the sport has gotten. So I don't feel qualified to give recommendations, but I'll certainly give you my opinion. Now, I'll certainly show you some of the equipment that I use, but I'll do it because it's more comical than anything else. I bought this bow back in 98. I think I paid around $199 for it. It's an old Jennings, and I love the thing. It's a little bit heavy, but I think because of the weight, if you have a bad release, it's a little bit more forgiving than some of the other bows that I've shot. Aside from the weight, I love it. It's fast enough for me. It packs enough punch. It's nice and quiet. And it's a pretty bow. I have no reason to upgrade. In fact, after shooting this for a little while, I bought another one. I bought this one, I think, in 99. The reason I bought an extra bow, for one thing, they're cheap enough. I was going on hunting trips quite often at the time. I don't like to have all my eggs in one basket. If I'm on a hunting trip, maybe I have a mishap with a broadhead and it slices my string. Uh, I'm clumsy and I drop my bow out of a tree stand or fall on it in the woods or something of that nature. I'm not out of business. I have another bow I can pick up and hunt with. I still use the little quickie quiver. I just switch it from bow to bow. I do the same thing with my stabilizer. I'm still shooting aluminum shafts and still shooting Thunderhead 100s. That's what I started with back in 89. I've been killing deer with them ever since I did that. I'm just the type of person that if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I just want to say to all the folks starting out, especially the younger folks, 
don't feel like you got to spend a fortune and have all the latest equipment to be successful. These bows have treated me well and I foresee no upgrades in the future. I only hunt out of necessity now. I don't chase antlers anymore, but back in the day I did quite a bit of it and did very well with this equipment here. I think it was 1999, I had the number two archery buck for the state of New Hampshire. And then a few years later, might have been 2002 or maybe 03, I had the number four archery buck as well. I uh, took my bear with it, uh, several other wall hangers as well. Now I didn't show you those bucks to impress you, but to impress upon you that you don't need to spend a fortune on equipment to be successful. A thousand dollar bow and a bunch of overpriced hunting clothes with trendy logos all over it, it might make you look good, but it won't make you a better hunter. Now I want to invite you along to view part two of this series where I harvest some really nice table fare and the bottleneck that the beavers created for me and you'll see my outdated archery equipment fill in my freezer once again.